Hello Pokemon trainers, welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Battle Stadium singles video here on iStarly TV. And a uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to you all. Uh, this is my Christmas special. <laughs> so today is Christmas. I'm recording this ahead of time. Uh, if you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. Otherwise, you know, Happy Holidays. Otherwise, Happy uh, Day. <laughs> Hope you have a great day today either way. Um, and I ch chose to be in this little cute little village because it looks Christmassy, I guess. So I hope you have a wonderful Christmas if you celebrate it, you know, with people you love and care about and all that. And as I've been doing with the past couple of like holidays, I don't know if I'll continue to do this like indefinitely, but uh, I have a Christmas themed team that I'm going to be featuring in this video. And I'm also wearing as close to a Christmas theme outfit as I could find <laughs> in this game. So I know it looks kind of ugly and kind of all over the place, but I, I thought this looked kind of Christmassy. So uh, yeah, I have a Christmas theme team that I'm gonna show off. I have a few battles and let's get to the team. All right, so here's the team. And again, I do not have a team code for this one, unfortunately. I mean, the season is just about to end in a few days. So I'm really, really excited for the new season. But if you are really interested in a team code for this, feel free to let me know in the comments. And if enough people are interested, I can go ahead and make a team code. But uh, I'll be honest. So I built this team, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted it to be Christmas themed. And it was a rough one, honestly. There, I was losing a lot of games. I made a couple of changes, and then I won a few, a few games. Uh, so it was a mixed bag as far as like how things went. But I think I improved the team slightly. So some of these might be a stretch for how they might fit a Christmas theme, and of course, some of them are going to be pretty obvious as to how they fit a Christmassy theme. So uh, of course, you know, first place you want to start. I wanted to start with a bomb of snow because it's a tree. It's also very snowy, so it's kind of like a snow colored. A snow covered tree. I really, really like a bomb of snow. Um, and so with this one, it was kind of a lead. So I'm running Focus Sash with max special attack and max speed. The goal here is to set up Aurora Veil, and with Focus Sash, we're almost guaranteed to set up Aurora Veil. And then we have three attacks. We have Ice Shard, Blizzard, and Sheer Cold. Uh, in the fourth slot, I, I started out with Leaf Storm, but I actually thought Sheer Cold seemed pretty good just to kind of scare out certain Pokemon and also to some sometimes, of course, very rarely score that one hit KO with the Sheer Cold, um, which can be really good if Pokemon are trying to set up against you and stuff like that. Um, because, you know, Obama Snow is not super threatening. The main goal with it is of course, to get up Aurora Veil for the rest of the team. Uh, and then Blizzard, of course, deals good damage. And then Ice Shard is there. Once they've got my Focus Ash, you know, I can just use Ice Shard before I faint to get off a little bit of damage. Um, I'm just going to go a little all over the place here. I'm going to go down to Bronzong here. Bronzong's like my second lead. And Bronzong, you know, as far as Christmas is concerned, I thought of it like an ornament, but it also looks kind of like a like a bell, or it is a bell, right? Uh, so it looks pretty Christmassy, especially since this is a shiny one. So, you know, I, I definitely thought it fit the theme. This Bronzong is my kind of secondary lead. So, you know, usually in, in any given game, I'll either lead with Obama Snow or Bronzong. I'll bring one or the other, uh, depending on what the opponent team is looking like and as you can see here this Bronzong is meant to set up trick room I'm running max HP max attack and the goal here is to set up trick room you know Bronzong is bulky enough that it can typically survive hits from most Pokemon and then set up trick room and then after the trick room either go for gyro ball or steel beam gyro ball gets off a lot of damage against a lot of Pokemon especially if they're faster than me and steel beam just does a lot of damage and it can knock me out which can give me momentum to go into something else later uh, and then from there, we have Stealth Rock as well, just as another option for Bronzong. Um, and then Weirdeer, I'm kind of going backwards here. Weirdeer, of course, you know, it's a it's a reindeer, right? So, of course, it fits the Christmas theme really well. And this Weirdeer is a funny set. It's brave nature. And the goal with this Weirdeer is to take advantage of Trick Room. So once Bronzong sends out Trick or sets up Trick Room, I can send out Weirdeer. And the goal is to basically spam Psy Shield Bash, which is its signature move, which will boost its defense. And then with Intimidate, you get to a point where you're doing a lot of damage, you're boosting your defense, and with Intimidate, you've already lowered their attack. So against physical attackers, you can survive for days against almost any physical attacker in the game once you get up at least one Psy Shield Bash. Lunge also is decent coverage and it also lowers their attack. And then Body Slam is there for stab. And then I went for Terra Blast. I went for Terra Steel for defensive purposes, but also offensively it seemed decent. Although something I found was that I get walled by Steel types. So that was probably something I should have worked on. But yes, Weird Ear is uh, 
you know, it's, it, it's fun. It's a cool one, right? And that's definitely a Pokemon you don't see very often in the meta. So those first three that I, that I talked about are pretty unconventional. The next three are not very unconventional. So let's go right back to the top because uh, I want to talk about Goldango mainly because it is probably the most of a stretch on this team as far as like a Christmas theme. I just thought, you know, it looks like it's gold. <laughs> so it looks like maybe a decoration, like some kind of Christmas de decoration, maybe some kind of ornament. It also has to do with, with coins or gold. So maybe it, it could embody presents or buying presents. You know, it has a little treasure chest on its belt. So that could be like a little present or, you know, you use money to buy presents. So yeah, I know it's a little bit of a stretch, but I think Goldango fits pretty decently. And honestly, if, if I'm being completely honest, I added Goldango because it's a good Pokemon. Um, I probably should have used a different set, but this one was pretty decent for me. Max HP, max defense with Thunder Wave, Hex, Make It Rain, etc. Um, the goal here is to paralyze opponents and then just get off a lot of damage with Hex. Goldango is just a great Pokemon, so I don't think it needs too much more explanation. And speaking of great Pokemon, we have Iron Bundle. This might be cheating because obviously Delibird is like, an, like a perfect Pokemon for a Christmas theme because it's kind of based off Santa. Iron Bundle is based off of Delibird, and it doesn't look quite as Christmassy or qu quite as Santa-y as Delibird, but, you know, it's based off of Delibird. Delibird's, no offense, an atrocious Pokemon competitively, so the design is awesome, but the competitive usability is really bad. Iron Bundle, on the other hand, is amazing competitively, so of course I wanted to use this Pokemon just so that I have at least some Pokemon on my team that are solid. Finally, we have Ogre Pond, which is another one that might be a little bit of a stretch. You can't see it with its mask on, but I thought of Ogre Pond kind of like a wreath. Um, so, you know, with Christmas you have wreaths, so I kind of thought of that. If I'm being completely honest, I started with Grass Ogre Pond, which was pretty decent, but I found that there were a lot of games where Steel types were a real problem for my team, and I really needed to get off some damage on Steel types, and so I added Fire Ogre Pond because, you know, it's a Fire type. And I, I still think Fire Ogre Pond looks decently Christmassy. I mean, if anything, it's green and red, which of course are the Christmas colors, so, you know, it fits pretty well. So that that is my Christmas themed team. Let's get to some games and see how it does. All right, so we have game number one here and my opponent's team looks pretty cool. Uh, yeah, by the way, this is post-commentary, post-commentated, <laughs> post-narrated, uh, so I've already recorded the battles and I'm just narrating over them after the fact. So I was looking at my opponent's team and the main question I typically ask with this team is, you know, am I gonna lead with Bronzong or am I gonna lead with Obama Snow? So am I gonna go for the Trick Room package or am I gonna go for kind of the Aurora Veil package? And sometimes I, I don't bring either, but mostly it's gonna be one or the other. And I looked at my opponent's team and it looked like the Trick Room package was gonna be pretty decent here. Um, one Pokemon that I was worried about was the Ooh, I forgot the name. The second stage of Garganackle. <laughs> oh, a Knackle Stack, I think it's called, which is a really funny name. Um, so I was kind of worried about that one. And then, uh, uh, of course, Regieleki was really scary because it's super fast. But also, Regieleki does not get taunt. So I kind of figured I could go for either of my leads and be fine. My opponent leads with the Knackle Stack, though. And on the one hand, that's good for me. And also, on the other hand, it's bad for me because I figured they were going to get up their Stealth Rock. So I'm just going to go ahead and get up my own Stealth Rock first. Uh, just because I figured I might as well, excuse me, I might as well, and I figured they cannot taunt me, so I can go for Stealth Rock, and then at some point I can also go for Trick Room if I want. The problem is Knackle Stack is extremely slow as well, so if I go for Trick Room, there's not too much, like, the, the main reason to go for Trick Room would be to set up for my future Pokemon, because my opponent's team is also really fast, however, the Knackle Stack is not. So I just decided to go for Steel Beam, just to get off a lot of damage and see how much it does, and luckily for me, it does a lot of damage. I think Knackle Stack, I'm assuming they have the Eviolite or Eviolite item, um, I'm assuming Knackle Stack has really, really low special defense, whereas Garganackle, the Evolve form, has pretty good special defense. Um, so either way, that does massive damage. You know, I'm not invested in special attack so uh, you know I was a little surprised by how much damage that did but this also works out really well for me because again I've mentioned this before but steel beam it deals 50% of, of my remaining health or I think it just does 50% of my health so um, it does 50% to me and that's good because it gives me momentum it knocks out my bronzong and lets me go into something else to kind of take advantage of the Trick Room. Of course, in this case, I don't have Trick Room up. But anyways, the, the beautiful thing here is I'm also going to knock them out. So we both go down here, and that's going to let me get a 
pretty good Pokemon in against whatever my opponent goes into, rather than having a Bronzong in against whatever they go into. So I decided to go for Weirdir. Obviously, again, I did not get up to Trick Room, and my Weirdir is a brave nature, so it, it is a negative speed nature. But the thing is that my opponent's team is so fast that Weirdir would be slower than all of them anyway, so kind of doesn't really matter in this case. Um, but my opponent goes into Dragonite here, and it ends up being super clutch that I went for Stealth Rock. Um, typically, you know, when you have a Trick Room Pokemon like that, you might mindlessly just click Trick Room right away, like as soon as possible. But I kind of assessed the situation and decided that, you know, Trick Room wouldn't be super necessary in this battle, and I would rather just go for the Stealth Rock there. And that ends up being really clutch here because it does do some damage to the Dragonite. Um, and of course, with Weirdeer, I am going to get the Intimidate on it as well. So things are just going really well for me here. And I think I clicked Psyseal Bash. I kind of missed it. Um, they do cl click Dragon Dance, um, which is scary, but they've already had their multi-scale broken. So all I have to do is do decent damage to them, and I shouldn't have to worry too much. I get off the, sh the Psyseal Bash, and it does about half, I think, approximately 50% of their health. And uh, that is going to be great for me because I also get the defense boost, as you see there. So even though they went for a Dragon Dance, they are now at neutral attack. Um, so, you know, they, they went minus one, then they went plus one. And I am at plus one defense. Now, however, I do miss the second Psy Shield Bash. I, had, I checked the accuracy here because I was like, are they holding like a Bright Powder item? Um, but I did not realize that Psy Shield Bash is actually 90 accuracy rather than 100. Luckily for me though, even though I'm getting unlucky with the with the miss there, um, luckily for me, my opponent is not getting the flinch from Iron Head, because if they were getting the flinch, this would be a lot worse for me. So here I was deciding what to go for. I considered clicking Bash because I could boost my defense for whatever comes in, but I just decided to go for the Body Slam, and my opponent does get a critical hit, hit here. So missing that Psy Shield Bash was actually really critical here. It ends up meaning that, you know, I'm 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 now down. I have one Pokemon left. My opponent has two, so pretty pretty scary stuff. Um, and then I went into Ogre Pond and I was like, you know what? I just lost the battle. My opponent's at plus one speed. They could just click Earthquake. Actually, I think I I, I Terrastalized first, which ends up being really stupid on my part. Um, I realized that that was my mistake was clicking Terra because I'm gonna now change into a pure Fire type. So all they need to do is click Earthquake and pretty much the game is over. Um, and as you'll see here, my opponent kind of over predicts and they end up going for the extreme speed, I think expecting me to not terrestrialize. Um, but as you can see there, it does not do that much damage to me. So I think they were better off just clicking Earthquake anyway. So uh, awkwardly and unfortunately for my opponent, they, they kind of made a misplay there without, if they had clicked Earthquake there, they would have just straight up won the game because I made the mistake and terrestrialize. I did not think about changing my type like that. So I should not have done that. But luckily for me, I'm going to get off the Trailblaze here. I went for Trailblaze just to boost my speed as well, so that whatever they go into, I am going to be faster than. And as you'll see here, it ends up mattering a good amount because they go into their own Ogre Pond. And I, I have to, I was just crossing my fingers. I'm at plus one attack because I Terrastalized. Um, and I am at plus one speed as well, so I'm definitely faster than them. And I just click Cudgel because there's nothing else to do. Uh, you know, I just might, might as well see what happens here, and I do, as you'll see, very luckily get the kill. Um, so the Stealth Rock were extremely clutch because if they had not, if I had not got, gotten up Stealth Rock, their Ogre Pond would have Sturdy, and I would not knock them out, and they would knock me out. So I made a couple misplays there. It ends up being the case that my opponent also made a couple of misplays, but I think that was still a great battle, and we got to show off Bronzong and Weirdeer. So I think that was an, an awesome battle. That was a lot of fun. So let's go to game two. And we have game number two here. My opponent's team looks terrifying. Uh, they, they have a lot of Pokemon that have just really amazing typings. And I just don't have the power, unfortunately. So I was really, I was really worried here. Um, I did figure that they were going to lead with Hippowdon. So I was trying to think of a good counter lead. So of course I chose Ogre Pond because if they let Hippowdon, I could just go for like a uh, Horn Leech there. Um, this is a game where, as you'll see, I did not bring either of my kind of dedicated leads mainly because I expected them to lead with Hippowdon. 
Um, and of course, Obama Snow versus Hippowdon is not great because since Hippowdon's slower, they will get the sand up after my uh, snow. So basically they'll get the edge. My opponent very smartly expects me to not lead with one of those Pokemon, or at least I think what they expected was actually that I would lead with Ogre Pond. So my opponent very smartly predicts that knowing that I was gonna be be afraid of that Hippowdon and they lead with Salamence, which is just pretty awful for me. However, this is awful for my opponent. They end up missing the dual wing beat, and I do have the play rough. I stayed in there, even though I was at minus one attack. I do also get the attack drop on them. Even though I was at minus one attack, um, I stayed in just because I, I wanted to keep the momentum. I felt like if I switched there, I would just take a lot of damage on whatever came in. So, um, you know, and I kind of honestly wasn't expecting the wing beat. And uh, again, very unfortunately for my opponent, they are going to miss that. And they missed the second dual wing beat as well. My opponent's also at minus two attack because uh, they got the, I got the intimidate with weird ear and I got the play, play rough attack drop. So not a great start for my opponent. And, and, you know, it is a little awkward that I'm getting all this hacks on them, but um, you know, it, it happens, I guess. I'm, I would be frustrated if I were them, but um, again, in the previous game, I also missed a move. So yeah, anyways, um, now I just go for the bash. They do end up switching into Ogre Pond. You know, I fi figured the bash was the best move um, just because if I could boost my attack, that would be great for me, even though now I'm aware that Psy Shield Bash has uh, 90 accuracy. Uh, they are going to go ahead and Terrastalize here, though, which of course is going to boost their attack stat, which is very scary. Uh, that's why Fire Ogre Pond is probably the best Ogre Pond. They're all really good, but Fire Ogre Pond, when it Terrastalizes, gets an attack boost, which is pretty scary because it already has a really high attack stat. So uh, yeah, they, they're going to go for the Cudgel here. I am at plus two defense, I think, or maybe plus one. Um, and I don't take that well. However, luckily for me, I do end up surviving that. And I I forgot what I clicked. I think I clicked body slam here. I, I kind of missed it. Yeah, I clicked body slam. And I think I knocked them out because, yeah, I figured Psy Shield Bash did almost half and body slam is a little bit more powerful. Um, and it is also stab. Both of them are stab. So I figured Body Slam might knock them out. And of course it did, which puts me in a very good position now because I have all three of my Pokemon left and my opponent only has two. And of course their Salamence is weakened at this point. So things are just going great for me. Um, here, I, I think, I don't remember exactly what I do here. Um, you know, obviously I'm not in a great position with my Weird Deer because it's about to die. Um, and it's at minus one attack, so if they start setting up like Dragon Dance or something, that could be really scary for me. Um, they do just go for the Earthquake there, which is a good play on their part. However, unfortunately for them, it just does not do that much damage. Um, then I go for Body Slam. I, I went for Body Slam, just kind of maybe, you know, maybe it would paralyze them. <sighs> and they miss a third dual wing beat, which is just... You know, I, I absolutely apologize for that one. Um, had they hit the wing beat, I don't know why they didn't just click Earthquake. I think they were expecting me to go back into Ogre Pond. So good plays by my opponent. I will say my opponent's playing really well and they are mostly being defeated by hacks. Had they gone for the wing beat there, I was staying in anyway. They probably still would have knocked me out. Um, and then that just does, it gives me the advantage of just going into Ogre Pond after that. So honestly, I don't think too much would be different of the outcome of this battle had they hit that. Um, with the first two wing beats, yeah, I definitely think there would be some significant differences to the battle, but um, I think it was still very winnable even if they had hit the original wing beat. Now I can go into Ogre Pond. I just kind of figured if, like, of course they could terrestrialize. I don't think they've terrestrialized. No, they did actually, never mind. So I'm aware that they have terrestrialized and I'm just going to be able to terrestrialize myself which is going to knock out their Magnet Zone. And I figured even if they have Sturdy, I could just go right into Iron Bundle. Um, so yeah, I figured this was this was my game. And I think I do end up winning this, spoiler alert. I mean, I have a Fire type against a Magnet Zone who cannot Terrastalize, so it's not, so it's not too much of a surprise if I win this. But um, let's just see what happens, because I do remember that they have Sturdy. Uh, so I, I know, I, I wonder if this is a battle where... Like, I, it looked like I was going to win, and then, you know, it, it went really back and forth. But we'll find out. Either way, they go for Terra Blast, which is just a normal type move. Yeah, okay, so I win this one pretty handily. Um, but, I mean, I don't want to say handily, right? Once again, my opponent missed three dual wing beads in the previous... Oh, they have Custat Berry, but it doesn't matter. In the previous battle, um, I missed the Psy Shield Bash, you know, so that does happen. Uh, although, you know, my opponent missing three moves as opposed to me missing one obviously is, is worse for my opponent. So good games by my opponent. You know, I, th I think I still could have won this battle had they not missed, but 
I also think it would have been harder to win, so that helped me out a lot, but I, I would still say I played decently, and once again, we got to show off Weird Ear, which I think is awesome. I think Weird Ear is a really cool Pokemon. As more Pokemon get added to the format, sadly, it's probably gonna get less and less viable, but at least I get to show it off right now before the new season comes out, so let's go to game three. And here we are with game number three. My opponent's team is really interesting. They have Infernape, which I definitely respect. They also have Mimikyu, um, Tornadus T, which I personally love. I know I featured that in a, a few a few videos a while ago. They also have Wochian, so they have a lot of really unique Pokemon, each of which is still really strong. So as I always say, you know, that's the beauty of Battle Stadium singles is there's obviously the top of the meta, but there's also a lot of Pokemon that are viable, even if they don't look that strong. Like everything has its kind of its its assets and its benefits to using. Anyways, I, I uh, assessed that Obama Snow setting up Snow would be pretty good. Um, and here I actually opt to not go for Aurora Veil. Usually against really strong, like fast threats like this Tornadus, I've been liking just clicking Blizzard just to get off a lot of damage on them, you know, as early as possible. Um, and sometimes they don't really expect it. Like they, they probably expect me to have Aurora Veil, but this time around I'm just going to do massive damage to them. And then I'm going to follow that up with an Ice Shard, which unfortunately does not knock them out, although it does come very close. And then my opponent's gonna go for the U-turn there to knock me out. And of course, they have Regenerator, which means that when they come back in later, they're gonna have a little bit more health. So good stuff by my opponent. I kind of wonder if I could cut down some of my speed EVs and just invest some of that into attack. Probably change my nature as well to like a naive nature so that in the future, like, or if I ever use this again, um, you know, Ice Shard will do more damage. So if I had a little bit of investment in attack and I wasn't a timid nature, I would have knocked them out there, which would have been amazing. Um, and then here they go into Mimikyu and I'm deciding what to do here. I know that Ogre Pond has Mold Breaker, which means that it'll ignore the disguise ability, which is insane. But I also thought Weird Ear could be a good option here here if I start setting up Psy Shield Bashes and just boosting my defense for the future, but I kind of settled for this. I figured that if they have Will-O-Wisp, they can't go for it against Ogre Pond, and Ogre Pond's just really strong. Um, now, the funny thing here is I don't have max speed in this Ogre Pond, and I'm also an adamant nature, so that ends up really biting me here because my opponent's going to be faster, and they're going to paralyze me with the Thunder Wave. Um, I do knock them out, though. Luckily, I do not get fully paralyzed, so I'm going to one-hit KO them with the Ivy Cudgel, again, thanks to the fact that I have Mold Breaker. But that does mean my opponent has two Pokemon left. They go into their Tornadus now. And I think I just Terrastalize here, even though I'm paralyzed. Um, I figured this was kind of the best way to go. Um, of course, I know that that um, they're going to go for a Flying type move against me. And, you know, I'm just going to hope for the best, I guess. So they go back into that Tornadus. Yeah, and I, I am going to Terrastalize here. I think I figured that since I'm at full health, and I, the momentum of the battle kind of feels like it's in my favor right now. Um, I just kind of figured like I, I could just terrestrialize there and just see what happens. So um, they go for Bleak Wind Storm, which luckily for me does not do that much damage thanks to some of the HP investment that I have in my Ogre Pond. And I'm able to finish them off with the Ivy Cudgel, which puts me in an amazing position. Now, they still have not terrestrialized, so obviously that's something that they have going for them. But I do have two Pokemon left and they only have one. Of course, one of my Pokemon is paralyzed and, and it's weakened, so um, we'll see what my opponent goes into, and it ends up being the Garchomp. So my opponent goes into Garchomp, and I just click Play Rough here. Um, I should have thought about it a little bit more. I guess it doesn't matter because they do just knock me out with the Earthquake, but I guess I should have thought about it more because, of course, once again, my opponent is still capable of terrestrializing here. So if I had gone Play Rough and they go Terra Steel, for example, obviously that would be bad. And something that's really bad here Oh wait, never mind. I was thinking of another battle. <laughs> never mind. There was another battle I was doing where the snow and the Aurora Veil end on a critical turn, but I don't even have Aurora Veil. I go into Weird Ear here, get off their, get off the Intimidate to lower their attack, and this is where I should have thought a little bit more about terrestrializing. However, as you'll see, they are a Terra Steel type, and as I said at the beginning of the video, Steel is one of my kind of worst matchups because I just don't really have much of anything on my team that can damage Steel types, except for Ogre Pond, which is now gone. So I was just having to hope for a Body Slam Para. 
um, in order to win this fight because obviously Garchomp is a terrifying threat. And you know, the Body Slam actually did pretty decent damage considering they resist it. And Weird Ear is not like that strong. So that did a lot of damage. It was a critical hit, but um, I'm, I was still surprised by how much damage that did. And they're just gonna go Earthquake and it's gonna get a critical hit right back at me and it's gonna knock me out. I don't think it's extremely unlikely that the critical hit on their Earthquake mattered. Um, if I had survived, then maybe I could paralyze them with Body Slam. And then if they get fully paralyzed like three turns in a row, um, which is hacks I absolutely don't deserve, especially after the Salamence missed three wing beats, you know, obviously that could help me win the battle. But I ended up losing this one, but I still think it was a fine battle. You know, Garchomp's a really scary threat. And of course, you know, my opponent got a little bit of hacks there, but... I think it's earned, right? Again, given what happened with that Salamence. So those are the games. That was a lot of fun. All right, so those were the games. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, and again, once again, for the 50th time, I hope you have a wonderful day today. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas, wonderful holiday season. Uh, as the year comes to a close, Happy New Year as well. And yeah, I, I hope you get everything you want in this new year. I hope everyone has a great one because you deserve it. So please leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos. And I keep saying this, but you know, pretty soon, within a week, we will be getting the brand new season of competitive battling, uh, Battle Stadium, and there will be a new rule set with all the new and returning Pokemon. So I'm extremely excited for that. I'm gonna make a lot of teams, make a lot of videos, and I can't wait. So thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you got for Christmas or what you hope to get or what you got for someone for Christmas. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.